So hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Lindsay Humphreys, and I'm the Program Director for Junior Achievement of New Mexico. Today, you are attending our Virtual Career Speaker Series program. This program is designed for Junior Achievement students across New Mexico, and we highlight business professionals, entrepreneurs, and innovative thinkers from a variety of industries. And each of our featured speakers will share details about their education, their job, and their journey to success. So before we get started, we're just gonna go through some of our uh, meeting reminders. So this meeting is recorded and we will post it onto our YouTube channel for anyone who is unable to attend today's session. Feel free to send over that link whenever you get it in your email. And then at this time, if you could please type your first and last name into the chat box. And if you're an educator and you have students on the call, if you could let us know how many edu students you have with you, that would be great as well. During the speaker's presentation, please make sure that your mics are muted. And if you have questions during the presentation, you can either write them down into the chat box or you can unmute and ask them live during the Q&A portion of the event. So today we are so excited to begin our Women Empowerment Month. This, this month is sponsored by the Jennifer Reardon Foundation. And today we are so excited to welcome Lisa Eden, Vice President and Chief Information Officer for PNM. Lisa, I'll jump over and share my screen and the floor is yours. Good. Well, I, uh, when Lindsay reached out to me um, to be part of this um, um, series of, um, uh, I, I was just super excited um, because I, I think um, I just love to share uh, what I have done in life and making sure that um, other people can learn from my experiences. And so I um, created this little chart here. It's uh, we're playing Candyland, and uh, it is really my journey to where I am today. And uh, the reason why I wanted to um, show Candyland or this Candyland board is really because it's so important to have fun in life, and um, it's it's uh, to laugh at oneself to. Uh, really enjoy life to the fullest is to me very important and so that's kind of where this Candyland board is representing. So I grew up in Sweden. I was uh, the youngest of three and uh, when I grew up I, I really had struggled with anxiety and I was a nervous soul. I, I got teased in school uh, and so I took a lot of comfort in sports and uh, my sport was swimming and so that was my main focus and uh, I, I love to swim uh, I became quite the accomplished swimmer and if you know anything about swimming it is a very intensive sport uh, I swam about 16 to 20 hours a week and so um, it, with that amount of time it, it's really a part-time job and so I became very efficient with my time. I really needed to focus to ensure that I got everything done, chores at home and, and schoolwork. And so with that, I also became a very good student. But there was one topic that I really had a hard time with. Uh, I just could not muster it and it was English. And so I had a very difficult time with English. And in Sweden, you start learning English in fourth grade. And for whatever reason, my brain was not um, shaped such I could pronounce English words. It took me years to be able to pronounce refrigerator. And I'm still not sure I can do it correctly. But it, it was just a very um, um, challenging topic for me. So when I was done with school, uh, I wanted to overcome my insecurities um, around English. And so I decided to go abroad to the United States for uh, a year. And so I figured out how am I going to do this and so the two alternatives that I had um, was either to be an au pair or um, use my swimming career and get a scholarship um, in the United States. And I was lucky enough to get a full ride at UNF. And so I came to, 
to New Mexico. And um, if you're familiar with Sweden, it is a, a very um, a green country. We're right by the ocean, or I grew up right next to the ocean, lots of rain. And um, I come to New Mexico and I wake up. I still remember the first first day I wake up in New Mexico and it is very desert-like. It's uh, sandy, it's brown, it's um, water is nowhere to be seen. Uh, but it did have one thing that I really enjoy, like any Swede, it had sunshine. And so I fell in love with New Mexico. And even though I was only going to stay for a year, I am here now, and it is uh, 35 years later. Um, so I came here as an 18-year-old, and I really didn't know anything about New Mexico. And so I really embraced the culture here. Um, Sweden was a very un um, uh, homogeneous society, and I just love the diversity here. And so for me, coming here was really um, a, a, a chance for me to challenge myself and grow because I had these insecurities about English. And um, I'm still not sure I've overcome my insecurities about uh, regarding English, but I did finish my degree at UNM. I get both a bachelor as well as a master's degree in business. And my concentration was finance. And, um, and so out of college, I um, had um, worked for small businesses, and, and uh, one of those businesses was Sh Sh Sherry Tillman Anderson, and I worked for her uh, for a couple of years. But eventually, I wanted to focus on my career, and so I wanted to join a big company that I could grow and experience different things. And so one of those companies were p and and so I was fortunate to um, start at, as an analyst at PNM. And you, you may think PNM, uh, electric company, that doesn't sound very exciting. But nowadays, uh, a, 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 an electric company is really a technology company. We um, have, there, there's been sort of a, a uh, uh, um, uh, the, the industry has grown tremendously. We've added wind, we've added renewables, and with that comes a lot of technology that we didn't have before. So we really have to adjust as a company. And so now PNM really can offer anyone a career from a meter reader, from a lineman, to an engineer, to an accountant, to a lawyer, to um, call center, customer service, customer service rep. So I think really any job that you would like um, to um, go into and, and create a career, um, p and can be one of those companies. And I have been with a company almost 20 years. And um, I have held 11 jobs here at p and And that has been an enormous ride for me. So when you think about this little Candyland um, journey, um, you go up and down and sideways and sometimes you take U-turns. And that's really what my career at PNM has been. And so I have held jobs in the gas side of the business. I have held jobs in investor relations. I've held jobs in finance in corporate strategy, in um, IT, um, and, and really I've seen an, an entire company from very different lenses. And one of the things that I really enjoyed seeing experiences different jobs is to be able to um, see the company from different lenses. Because if you're in finance, you look at the company one way, and if you are in operations, you look at the company a different way. And here, I've been able to go to various organizations within the company, and that has really broadened my view. I have gotten a, a better appreciation for what the company does. And, and to me, um, 
that has been um, sort of eye-opening for me. So when I think about your journey and as you create your journey um, through your career, uh, I would say one of the biggest learnings that I've had here at PNM is never shy away from the challenge. Uh, so I really took on when I came to this country, not knowing a single person, um, being 18 years old, and I don't understand how my parents let me go, but they did, so kudos to them. Um, but I came here, and it really was a tremendous challenge, and there was some hard time when you're coming to this country and you don't know the language word very well. and but you have to overcome them and you have to solve it. And so for me, those challenges are the, the times that I have grown the most. Uh, and, and that is so hard to know when you go through it, but as you come out on the other side, that's when you see, wow, I learned something about myself. I grew as a person. I was able to overcome this, and, and that's to me an extremely important lesson. So um, as I have held all these jobs, I've also collected a lot of experiences. But in the beginning of my career, I was a single contributor, and, and, and here at PM, we call that you're basically you're not leading any people, you're working. And, and you don't have, you're not a manager or supervisor, you're just um, focused on your own work. But um, 15 years ago, I became a mom. And uh, to me, that, that was just um, such a, um, what, what a privilege to be a mom. I love being a mom. I, I, I was an old mom when I had my daughter. I was 39. So, um, I was not able to have any more children, but Emma, my daughter, um, she is now a freshman in high school and she has taught me so much. And I think being a mom and really being any parent, um, you really have to put the child first. So you have to put your needs aside and then um, you have to focus um, on, on your um, child to making sure that um, that child's um, needs are met. And to me, that's really what leadership is about. Um, so as I took on more uh, demanding roles and, and became a supervisor and then a manager and then a director, I really learned so much from being a mom because when you're a leader and when you lead a group of folks, you have to put your employees first, you have to put your um, department first. You have to put your whole organization first. And so to me, being a mom really grew uh, me as a person, but being a mom is not easy either, right? So there's a lot of challenges that you have to overcome, um, a lot of time commitment, and, and it's not necessarily just a straight line. Um, and um, so to that, Another challenge that you have to overcome that I learned so much about myself and, and I, I continue to grow. So um, in five years ago, I became the VP um, and treasurer for PNM. And so what does a treasurer do? It basically takes care of the checkbook. Uh, and we spend a ton of money at PNM. We we invest in the company in the order of um, close to a billion dollars a year. So that's a lot of money. And so what a treasurer does in, in a very simple form is making sure that we can pay for all those investments and that we either borrow or go out um, to the stock market to issue equity and making sure that we can pay for all those money on a, on a daily basis. Um, but um, after three years, and, and I said that I had held 11 jobs um, at PNM over my 20 year career. So that's 
more less than two years for a job, right? So after three years, uh, the senior leaders here at PMM felt like, Lisa, you've done your job three years. Now it's time for you to get a different experience. And so they moved me into human resources. And so I became the VP of human resources. And um, sure, I took a bit, I had a business degree at UNM, and um, you do take some human resources classes. And I have worked with human resources a lot as a, uh, as a leader, as a manager, but really no formal education regarding um, human resources or, or very little expertise directly working in the human resources department. So here I was leading this department with really uh, little um, um, technical skills in that area. Um, and what I found was when you are at a level, certain level within the organization, you are going to rely on the experts. So you're going to rely on people within your human resources department to bring your information and you become the decision maker. And so really it becomes much more regarding your leadership skills than uh, actually knowing the technical details, what goes into the human resources department. And so what a challenge, right? And, um, but I, I never say no to a challenge as you, you I'm sure, um, discover as you hear me talk here. Um, so I was like, I'm right there. I'm going to leave this department. And I learned so much from um, all those um, employees. And they also learned from me because I came from a very different perspective. I had a different viewpoint. And sometimes when you're in the weeds, you don't necessarily understand or you, you, you can't elevate yourself and make a, a, a broader decision. And so I was able to come in and, and ask questions that perhaps they hadn't thought of. And it was a really good relationship and an enormous uh, experience for me. And then a year ago, um, leadership told me, Lisa, you've been in, in HR for th two years. Now it's time for a new challenge. And so here I am, okay. Uh, and, and I must say, every time these things come up, um, as you embrace challenges, they become easier. They don't become so scary because first time when you're going through a change or when you're having difficulties, it, it, it gets very challenging for internally. You get stressed, you get, how am I going to deal with this? I'm going to do it. But as you do it more often, it, it becomes much more familiar. And as a result, it's not so scary. So last year, um, I became the CIO. And what that is, is uh, it's the chief information officers. And, and it's the person who um, oversee the entire IT department. And so now I have done that for a year, and whew, what, what a year it's been, not only um, leading the IT department, but also leading that department through a pandemic. So um, a, a, a great experience for me, and I've also grown, collected a lot of knowledge, and, um, and, and it's been a great experience for me. And as of Monday, I'm back into my uh, role as the treasurer because leadership again said there's time for a change. So um, just to wrap it up a little bit, I, I wanted to um, uh, come back to a few things that I've said. I think um, being a mom um, really um, taught me a lot of things of being selfless and um, putting the people around you first, which I think is very important when you come to your career. Um, you, um, I've also learned um, to experience new things. 
it's hard to experience new things and there's a lot of stress that comes along with it and um and and um um but but i do think that you grow from that kind of experience and me leaving sweden coming here as an 18 year old is a great example of that and then never say no to a challenge and uh, and i think that um that also goes hand in hand in terms of insecurities we all have insecurities they, they can be in all different areas right um, but we need to make sure they don't stand in your way and that we learn to overcome them. And that's a journey in itself, right? It's not like one day you overcome them. It's a little bit at a time. So to me, be able to embrace those challenges and, and not let your insecurities stand in your way. And then be kind. Um, kind is, is there's just not enough kind people around. And I think it's just so important to focus that we're kind to ourselves um, that we're kind to our family, to our friends, and, and other people, and, and really think about what does kind mean to you. Um, so that, that's what I've had to share today, and I'm just so thrilled to be here, and, um, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you so Thank much, you so Lisa. Much. All right, so we are going to move into the Q&A portion of the event. If you would like to type any questions into the chat box, now is a good time to do that. We do have a couple of questions that were submitted via registration form, so we'll start off with one of those. Um, so the first one is, what advice would you give? <laughs> you see the one come through. I'm sorry, I saw the chat. <laughs> we, got, we can start with that one. That one looked like a good one. So what is the most fun English and Swedish word? Well, um, I just kind of think uh, Kansas and Arkansas are fun because they do not go together. You say Kansas <laughs> and it should just be Arkansas, but it's Arkansas. So th those, I don't know why that's popped into my head. I just think those are fun words. And uh, what's a fun word in Sweden? Uh, <laughs> it's C seven C six C seven C six C men, <laughs> or sailors, I suppose. That's great. Thank you so much. So the first, another question, what advice would you give to someone that they can do to help stand out with their employer, regardless of their tenure? Um, I think always being open to new ideas um, and, and really also focus on solving problems. Um, sometimes we get into um, sort of focusing why the problem happened or trying to find blame and um, but really focusing on solving the problems and be accounting and executing on solving those problems. Excellent. Thank you. You did touch on this a little bit, but there is a question that is, what has been your biggest influence? Um, I think it, my biggest influence, which is, 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 a, is, a, is a, a broad answer, but it's really the relationships I have collected over the years. Um, I, I know you've heard how important mentors are. Um, to me, mentor is like, what is a mentor? But to me, it's really relationships that you can build and that you can ask for advice, ask for help. In, in whatever area you, you need at that particular time. So uh, to me, building relationships, uh, and, and they can be relationships in all kinds of areas. And, and it can be friends, it can be uh, friends of your parents, it can be teachers, it can be coaches, it can be, uh, it, it spans the gamut, but 
Um, really asking for advice is really a good thing. And so expanding those relationships and everybody loves to share their expertise. Uh, I, I, there's not a single person who you're going to ask and say, you know, help me with this or can I ask advice for this? And they're going to say, no, I'm not going to do that. No one, is going to, not, not a single person is going to do that. They always have it to share uh, one's perspective and, and so forth. Excellent. Question from the chat. As a leader of numerous departments, can you talk more about teamwork, hearing a variety of ideas and rely, relaying on the, relying on the expertise of other team members? Yeah, and so what I have um, 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 discovered here in my journey at PNM, it is so important to have teams with different experience and different opinions. Sometimes that's hard, um, right? Because when you are not like-minded, you may not agree on things. But to me, when you're not like-minded, you don't come up with the same solution. And so when you have people, when you form teams and you really respect each other's opinion and experiences, because they are different, you can create a, a, a much stronger solution and perhaps a, a little different than solution than if you have the same people with the same mindset and same experience. So, so with, with that also, you have to respect people that may not necessarily agree on, on where you're going or where you're heading. But having input from people with differing in opinion is super important in order to make decisions. Thank you. I'm going to give everyone a chance to, if you would like to unmute and ask a question live, you can go ahead and do that now. Uh, there was one more in the chat chat room, I'm going to see, and I didn't. I can read it out. As a di as as disciplined as you probably are with intake as a swimmer, did you treat yourself to a slice of cake on your birthday yesterday? Happy birthday, Lisa. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, one of the things that I, I, I really enjoy is Swedish candy. So we have something, uh, a salt licorice, which is, um, uh, you can't find it here. Well, it, you, there are places you can find it, but it's not very common in, in, in the United States. And um, so my mom sent me salt licorice um, for my birthday. And so that's what I had. I didn't have the cake, but I certainly had something along the same line. And that must have been Shannon that asked that question. <laughs> that was. Um, so just before we are going to start wrapping up, do you have, what is your favorite part of being a New Mexican? Oh, um, red and green chili. Absolutely. Hands down. Hands down. I, I couldn't even, um, I, I think... When I came here, um, uh, I, I, I didn't tolerate heat at all in my food. I, it was a very bland food in Sweden. It was meat and it, not, it was lots of potatoes and, and no spices whatsoever and, and, and lots of fish. But uh, I uh, have become a true New Mexican and uh, love a good red and green chili. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to wrap us up for today to be cognizant of everyone's time. So thank you, Lisa, for doing this today. And kiddos on the call, thank you for joining us and participating in today's program. But before we log off, we just want to uh, give you a couple follow-up uh, information. So following this presentation, all participants will be asked to complete a post-program mindset survey. If you complete the survey, you get entered into a drawing to win a Dion's gift card. Huge shout out to Dion's who has partnered with us for our lucky survey responders. 
And uh, teachers, if you are facilitating this for your students, please make sure that you give them the link so that they can fill out that survey when it comes to you. And lastly for today, please join us next week as we continue our wonderful Women's Empowerment Month sponsored by the Jennifer Reardon Foundation. Next week on February 10th at one o'clock, we welcome Jennifer Heist Trujillo. She is the Vice President for SEMCO and we will send out the registrations links for that as well. So thank you so much for your time today, Lisa, and your honesty, and everyone will see you next week. Bye. Thank you for having me. It, it was thank wonderful. you.